I'd like to look at some of the posing that Norman Rockwell uses. We often think of Rockwell as this brilliant painter who uh, put together scenes of Americana. It's very human, it's very family oriented. Um, he's very tight and detailed. Um, I think what we often overlook in Norman Rockwell stuff um, is that he was a master at composition, not and but not just composition, at being able to put character and emotion into his uh, people, the people that he paints. When you look at a Rockwell painting, you know what every single person in that painting is thinking or feeling. You get a sense of their character. They're not like what many painters do, and even animators, where they're just posing um, their characters or people around, <clears throat> and they might be beautifully rendered, beautifully executed, well drawn, but they lack a sense of story. They lack a sense of character or emotion. They're just mannequins standing there. They could ha not have a heart at all, and you wouldn't know it. They're just external, finely done renderings. Rockwell gives you so much in so little space that you know what's going on in that in that story immediately. You know what's going on in that character's head, what's in that character's heart, what's going on in the scene, and that's what I want to look at. So I've got a few paintings uh, that I took photographs of when we when I was recently at the Rockwell Museum uh, this past um, uh, March <clears throat> or February before the uh, the COVID thing came on. Um, <clears throat> so here, this is a painting of in a circus of a checker game and um it's it's just marvelous what rockwell has done in this every single character you know what's happening um <clears throat> this girl she's a bystander really interested in the game wanting to know what the next move is going to be uh He's the one playing. This guy here, he's the one playing. He's trying to figure out how to get out of the situation that he finds himself in in this game. He's going to about to lose the game and to this clown, and he doesn't like it. Um, <clears throat> this guy, he's probably just, I mean, he's... This guy here, he's really interested in the game. He's he's fascinated by what's going on, and he's trying to figure out how this clown has, you know, put the fix on them in this game and beat him, right? And the clown is very happy. He's uh, he's got the game, and he knows that there's his move. He's done. Um, but let's look more deeply at what's going on in terms of posture. Um, for instance, this guy. <clears throat> so. He's got this marvelous posture where he's solid. Rockwell's characters are always solidly planted on in reality. <clears throat> and his head is over. Beautiful posture. You know exactly what's going on here. He's just leaned over into that. Um, He's leaning back. He's leaning more away from the game, trying to figure out what to do. That gesture, that thumb coming up there on his face. His gaze is here, just as that other guy's gaze is there. Um, <clears throat> so he's leaning back, contemplating how he's going to get out of this mess. How can he win the game? She's also leaning into it, and she's over, which is kind of nice. So she's got this posture here nicely framing him uh over the game so all of them are sort of like a unit on this game board right they're all looking down at the pieces leaning into it leaning out of it but he's still even though he's leaning away his body is directing them down to the the game board she's leaning over the game board right and so her curvature is pointing us back. His curvature is pointing us in there. The clown is sort of doing the same thing. He's got this sweep 
which is kind of a nice thing where he's feeling a little bit light on the air maybe I don't know that that curve is helping to bring us into that circle that sense of a circle and then he's straight up in terms of posture he's he's upright he's not he's not leaning into it trying to figure it out he's not leaning back trying to contemplate it he's solidly up and vertical in that and the only thing that's really gesturing telling a story is this hand right the hand is then putting it back going ah oh, i've got you see it's my you know it's not any one of these guys um who are who have just made that move you know exactly that the clown has made the move we don't hear anything we got no description we see it all just from the posture <clears throat> he's up and he's confident he's strong He's got this thing. Compositionally, if we look at this, we've got all this nice material here that is sort of pulling us into this nice composition. And then, you know, the, the curtains are sort of wrapping everything around here. So even in terms of this composition, they've got these circular things helping to build the sense of the circular composition. The audience comes in from this way, this way, or this way and goes down into this around and sees what's going on in that posture so um, let's look a little more closely at um, these guys look at their look at look at this guy's posture okay so his head whoops. he's leaning forward his eye line is going down he's got that cigar sticking out of there his his hand is propped up with his thumb trying to think he's in a thinking posture that that hand and that head tells me he's thinking as he's looking at something and he's leaning back that is a beautiful beautiful subtle gesture right there he's all contained his hand his arm this is thought thoughtfulness there's a lot going on in that head this is his machinery inside his brain is moving uh trying to figure this thing out <clears throat> that's him um even from what we can see of um you know the the, the ring the circus i don't know what he is a vendor or whatever um he is leaning into this game his eyes are looking down his no his his mustache is even helping with that sense and it's nice that his hat is sort of cocked off to the side because it's uh it gives it a really interesting flavor even though it feels like it might be blocking that it's such because there's repetition of circles and things um it doesn't obstruct anything it, it sort of funnels his head to help point uh, everything down onto this these pieces where they've got this. Um, <clears throat> if we look at the the clown, right? This clown. This is just his upper body gesture. His upper body gesture. His head, right? It's not a profile, right? It's leaning. This the center of his head is. It, that's the top of his head is facing us right there's the per, there is the perspective lines on his head right and his ear line you can see from the eye to the ear that that's we're, we're looking at the top of his head it's more like that <clears throat> nice strong supporting angles here he's confident like as we said and he's got this nice beautiful gesture this is this is an animator's dream uh, this kind of a pose with the fingers just like that just poised over there what a beautiful gesture that is <clears throat> so see animation is not just for animators it's also for painters because this is beautiful beautiful uh, work from Rockwell so if we go back to this scene um, just it's a marvelous execution of gesture in this um, 
Even the dog, even the dog, you know, he's sound asleep and he feels, he doesn't just like a dog is just laying there. There's some attitude to that dog. <clears throat> Here's another, um, st this is actually a pencil study preparatory uh, to um, one of his uh, paintings. Uh, the painting was not at the uh, museum, but another example of excellent posing. The focal point, right, is this guy. He is the focus because he's silhouetted in there and he's standing apart. These girls, all three of these girls are together as a unit, so their, their combined gesture is creating this kind of a unit, including the dog. You could include the dog in their gesture. Right, this whole thing is building up to this to lead them into this triangle. This the three girls and that guy—they're all sort of adoring of of him or the relationship that's going on here. He, on the other hand, is into it as well. Right, so he's there adoring them in return, or at least the the, the main girl. That's the compositional gesture, but just look at the beauty of those other gestures. He is alert, he's up, he's confident, right? He's got a curve in his back. She's got a curve in her back, so you know these two are working together. I mean, he's in love with her and she's in love with him. And she's perhaps, this one here is perhaps wishing she was in love with him. Um, but we know that this girl here, the one with the ponytail, is the one who is into him, right? So her hand's up here. He's down here with his confident folding of the arms. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful gestures. Um, this, The gesture on this girl is really marvelous. I love this. Her whole upper torso is bent and she's you know shifting on the one side of her rear end in, in that pose and see her her feet bent down here rockwell loved to, to pull those pigeon toe those feet together her head sort of back and uh leaning so she's got a nice look at that line Look at that beautiful, remember, realize I always say draw longer lines and your characters get that nice spine. Look at that, that's in Rockwell. You see it in her, right? <clears throat> simple, simple, beautiful uh, spines of action, lines of action in these characters. <clears throat> Even the dog has a nice line of action. Look at that, with the tail, a little bit of S-curve going off there. Look at those, look how his legs are out there. Nice, it's lovely. Um, everything compositionally is um, working well here. I mean, like like we said in that first bit, that we have sort of like these. This is the gesture, repetition, 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 and then. You got the cups with their straws. Straws are pointing up. It's pointing up the arm. That second person there. This thing here. <clears throat> this thing is around here. Um, all this is working together to help this composition work out so nicely. Now, if we go to one, a close-up. Let me just go to a closer version I have of this um, here. We don't see anything else here. Now, look at how well this works in <clears throat> close-up, just the head and shoulders. Whoops. <clears throat> His shoulders there, sort of sticking out like that. Um, you don't see her shoulder, but you, you're assuming it's here because you're seeing a bit of her arm here coming up, her hand supporting her chin. Look at that beautiful gesture of that girl's face. And her head poised right on that hand, that hand, right? 
with that ponytail sticking up. That is beautiful. Look at that. What delicate subtlety. Fantastic work. Um, his He's sort of sticking out a bit. His head is more alert, more like a peacock. His arms are nicely folded over right here. That's all working there. He's got a little bit of a turn on that. And um, that's a really nice, really nice pose itself with the hat. Even Rockwell, he doesn't even, he doesn't, nothing's thrown away. You could just so easily just put that hat anywhere. He figures out the best place to put that hat to communicate uh, the attitude. The attitude of that guy is really cocky and really happy that he's at this point. And then there's this girl. Um, just what little we see, what little we see, that silhouette of that wrist and that other hand were just we just we don't even see the fingers on this yet we see how beautifully those things are that we know that she's holding her hands and her head in her hands and she's got that adoring look on that pose there so um just marvelous work again and if i go closer now it's in the expressions Right, Rockwell was really well known for his expressiveness, but you know exactly where these eyes are looking. They're all looking. They're locked. They are locked to one another. Right. There's no question, and the relationship of those those heads with you know that delicate turn, that delicate turn. We we can only assume what she's doing, but she's more profile. He's leaning in. Look at that, just his subtlety. He's leaning forward. She's sort of back. Being a little more coy, perhaps. He's leaning forward. He's got that confidence in his eyes, in his expression. That confident smile, right? She's just enjoying it. And um, she's trying not to show too much emotion there but she's liking it too. So just in this comp, everything within a frame, um, you can orchestrate to have emotion and tell a story. The subtlest, most subtle things, you got to take time to figure out how can I communicate the story with what I've got? Here, I'm, these are super close-ups come together and yet just the posture and the, the costuming that is here is helping to convey something wonderful. Again, we don't see much of her hands, but we get a complete sense of we know where she's going. Here, she's got just a few little fingers, and a, a, you, you get a sense of her attitude just with that close cropping and these close-ups. And so gesture isn't just for big body poses, even heads, hands, eyes, mouths, nose, uh, the way the head tilts, um, the way the hands, whatever little you can see, every little bit can contribute to beautiful storytelling and character poses. And that's what you can learn from Norman Rockwell. And um, it, animation and this level of, of skill and storytelling with images and with people, it, this is his specialty. This is where he shines like very few other uh, painters or animators. He's really got he would have made a good animator. Norman Rockwell would have made a great animator.